Hello, I'm Ashton Adams. And I'm Patrick Fuhrer. And this is TNN. Well, Titans, another week has passed here at Collins, and it's been great. Patrick, what do you think? I think the two weeks have been really good, but I'm already ready for spring break. Yeah, aren't we all? Well, guys, our boys basketball team played an excellent game against South Oldham on Tuesday night, and hopefully they carry that momentum over to Shelby County on Friday. Okay, Patrick, what kind of news we got this week? Well, Reading Gala is coming up in a few months, and it's usually a very fr stressful time for our seniors at Collins. But for more information, we go to our field reporter, Malaya Cunningham. Here, seniors, within the next couple of months, you guys will be selecting books for Reading Gala, which is set for April 16th. So we have Ms. Jones here to talk to us more about the Reading Gala. So tell us what happens during the Reading Gala. Well, the Reading Gala is a, a traditional event for our seniors. Uh, we have been doing the Reading Gala for about 10 years in Shelby County. Uh, not only does Martha Lane Collins High School participate in this event, but also Shelby County High School does as well. Um, the Reading Gala to me is just one of those feel-good events. Uh, it's a great experience for everyone involved, both students and teachers. And so uh, the basic concept of Reading Gala is that uh, we form book discussion groups with our students. Um, each book discussion group is led by an adult uh, mentor. There are uh, approximately six students in each group. All six of those students uh, read the same book. And then on the day of the gala, all the seniors come into the library. We have food and drink and have a little party in here for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then we um, uh, break into our book discussion groups. And we have a great time. Um, this year's gala, I believe right now we're going to have 37 different groups. So we have a great collection of both fiction and nonfiction. For that event and student all seniors will be aware of their choices we will have a morning when all seniors will come to school um, early because it is kind of a first come first serve sort of thing and um, they will sign up for the book of their choice they have about six weeks to read the book and then the actual gala will be um, thursday april 16th okay and i know you have some personal favorites from the reading gala so could you tell us some well my goodness it's really hard to say personal favorites now i mean you know, I always, of course, enjoy the books that I read because I usually do a group for reading gala. Um, I had a great discussion last year with a book called Where Things Come Back, and I'm actually going to be doing that book again this year. Uh, one of the best discussions I ever had personally was with The House of the Scorpion, which is um, science fiction. Um, but, you know, the great thing about reading gala is that there's always a choice of a book that will appeal to somebody because we have such a range of different kinds of reading. We've got fiction, nonfiction, you know, as far as the fiction goes, we might have science fiction, realistic fiction, love stories, uh, historical fiction. With nonfiction, we could have biographies, memoirs. Um, so there's always a really good selection of books for students to choose from. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones, and seniors, get her early to get your books from Reading Gala. Project Graduation is in need of 25 parents from both Collins and Shelby County to attend their next meeting on January 26th. If we don't have any volunteers to help out, guys, Project Graduation is just not going to happen. Patrick, what's, what else do we have? Well, Emily and Rachel made a nice report about Hosa, what we will see now. Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is Emily, and we're here with Ms. Howe, the advisor of HOSA for Martha Lane Collins High School. So what does HOSA stand for? HOSA stands for uh, Health Occupation Students of America. It, um, that was its former name, now it just goes by the National HOSA Organization, and it is for any sort of future health professionals, any students who are interested in a career in healthcare. So what do we do in HOSA? HOSA is involved um, in sort of the healthcare aspect of the community. So we do fundraisers, um, right now our national fundraiser is for the Leukemia and the Lymphoma Society. So we've been raising money for that. Um, we also do community service projects in the community. We've been trying to raise money for the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, we do local health fairs, health screenings, um, the blood drives as well. Our partners at Shelby County ATC, they do some health screenings and blood drives. And uh, we also prepare for competitions for our national conference in March. 
members can compete in national competitions. Can you tell us more about that? Um, our competitions are really focused towards the medical field and reaching uh, proficiency in medicine. So there are certain knowledge tests that you can take related to certain health fields, um, medical terminology, dental um, knowledge tests, physical therapy, um, all for all those medical professions. Um, there's also teamwork events, um, emergency preparedness events like CPR and um, epidemiology training and um, leadership events, so prepared speaking, medical photography. There's a very wide range of um, available competitions for students. Because this is only second year for HOSA um, and it's not very like widely known, what do you see for the future of HOSA? We definitely are trying to develop HOSA in the school. Um, it is affiliated with our biomedical science program, which also is only in its second year. So as we build the biomedical science program, we'll also build um, our HOSA chapter. Right now, we are actually an affiliate chapter with Shelby County um, High School and their biomedical science program, and then the students at the Shelby County ATC. So as we're sort of figuring things out, um, as I'm sort of figuring things out, we hopefully in future years will have a chapter specific to Collins um, where we will have our own designated officers where we can be competing against um, Shelby County and the ATC and just sort of developing um, our own group of future medical professionals. Great, thank you Ms. Hal. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, I'm Ryan Giblet, and I'm here with Gabby Karras, former state champion and all-American cross-country runner, and your Athlete Spotlight of the Week. So tell me, Gabby, when and how did you first get started running? Um, I started running in about kindergarten. Um, my sister, she's a few years ahead of me, and she started running in fourth grade. And I always just kind of wanted to be like her, and so when she started running, I decided to start running too. And we both have just been like running buddies ever since then. So. Oh, that's so good. You have somebody to look up to. Mm -hmm. So, what is your motivation to win? Like, what pushes you when you're running? You start to get tired. What What do you think about? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess knowing that to not give up. Um, there's always that point in a race, or I'm sure like people that do sports, there's always a point in a practice or a meet or whatever you do that you want to give up or you want to stop trying because you're lazy or tired but when I hit that point during the race I usually try to just stay together and my coach has always told me um, to stay out of the comfort zone and stuff and so I just keep that going through my head. That's good. That's good for just life too, you know, like push yourself out of your comfort zone. Who are your biggest role models? Um, okay, well, my favorite runner is Jordan Hesse. She's a runner at Oregon. Um, I look up to her a lot. Um, Katarina was a big role model yeah. for me. She always inspired me. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. What's one of your best racing memories? Oh, God. Um, you probably have so many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, my best racing memory was probably after track state this past year. After I crossed the line after the two mile, I had, um, they didn't know if I had broken the record or not. And so there was like a moment of silence after I crossed the line. And like all of a sudden they said that she broke it. And like everyone looked crazy. Aww. I don't know. I, I thought that was a great feeling. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's so awesome. Okay, last question. Are you planning to continue running cross country after high school? Um, hopefully, yes. Um, I want to go to college for cross country and track. Um, hopefully, I'll get scholarships and stuff like that. And Definitely. Maybe, <laughs> I'd say. Maybe one day I can go for it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gabby. It was so great to talk to you. No problem. <laughs>
Sorry, Mr. Brown. All right. All right. Bye, Mom. I love you. Well, new orders from Brown Town. Gotta get to work. Actually, this time. Um, did you just tell him you love him? What? No, no, I didn't. You must have heard that wrong. All right, guys. Uh, let's get to work. Mr. Brown wants this episode done. All right. Uh, any ideas? Um, I say we just brainstorm it, you know? All right. All right, I was thinking a superhero. A fast one. One that can fly. Yeah, that's what I want to do. How about another stop motion? Hmm. Yeah, a white person skateboard this time. Sounds like a pretty good idea. I can see it now. No, 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 no. We are not doing that. These are all pretty good ideas, but I'm not sure Brown Town's gonna like them too much. Yeah, he usually doesn't like our stuff. But we need something spicy. Something spicy. good. Spicy. Huh. How about... Tucker over here, and I'm here to spice up your daily cooking. So, the meal I prepared for you guys is spicy potatoes. I know you're thinking spicy potatoes kind of kind of sounds like hot potatoes, but well, this isn't the children who can't hot potato, right? So what you want to do, you want to get the potato and you want to throw it in the oven. Now, you want to keep it in the oven for about 24 hours just to get it right. Alright, now lucky for you guys, I already had one prepared in my other oven over here, and we're gonna see how it turns out. Did it suddenly just get cold in here? Lightweight, well, girl. Lightweight. I think that uh, idea was too spicy. Too spicy. Yeah, now I'm cold just because of it. Alright, uh. Who is it? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're almost done. We'll be back there in like five minutes. I love you too. Dude, this time I know you said it. He said it to me! No. You want us to leave? What? Does he want us to leave? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go back. Brown town. Yeah, he never back to brown us, town. He never gives us enough time. A week. Come on, Connor. Get off the camera. Oh, guys, I'm here. I have a dream that my poor little children will one day live in a nation that will not judge them by their skin color, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, with its vicious racist, that its governor, his lips dripping with the words of either position and nullification. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our home. This is the faith that I go back to the south. With this faith, we will be able to hew out the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. I. 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 I have a dream!